Because we have the greatest achievements of all across the board with the true meaning of achievement. Because achievement and success and progress for us can never be separated from the divine. It can never be separated from our connection to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we come from a teaching generation after generation, century after century, of the most upright, moral, just people that ever stepped foot on the face of this earth. And that is the legacy that we come from. And if anyone does not fulfill that legacy, and that they stray from that legacy, that that's their problem. And if it comes into the public sphere, that we should be the first to condemn our own selves, let alone our brethren that make mistakes. We should be the first that condemn our own selves. If you make a mistake, Allah Ta'ala loves the just. Even if it means standing for justice against your own self. We are people of justice. We don't have the group gang mentality. That we believe in principle. And we believe in the highest ethical standard which is laid down for us in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that ethical standard is, إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِهِ أَحْسَنْ Repel in brackets evil, whatever comes to you from those who are opposing you and showing enmity towards you with what is أَحْسَنْ. Notice carefully, he didn't say with husn. It's not enough according to the Quranic ethical standard to just respond in a good manner. That he said, بِلِّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ You respond in the very best of ways. Meaning if you have a choice between three alternatives, that the Quranic standard is you respond to the best. And you respond in the best way. And that is the standard that we have to uphold. And when our heart comes to life in realizing these meanings, and we're not just going through the everyday motions, and then... When that becomes a truth and we start to intuit this, then you will start to see what is going to happen after that. Because the nature of our Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ رَآهُ بَدِيهَةً هَابَهُ Whoever saw him suddenly was in a state of awe, because he was a majestic person. وَمَنْ خَالَتُهُ مَعْرِفَةً أَحَبَّهُ And whoever spent time with him and came to know him, they came to love him. If that's not happening with people that are around you, there's something wrong. When people spend time with you and they come close to you, they should come to love you. Because everyone who spent time and came close to our Prophet, they came to love him. Because they realized that all of the different asbab and means through which we love people, and all of these qualities and traits of the heart, and this expanded breast about which we were referring to, that when you experience the realities of those traits, that will transform you. And this is really the key to everything. Is that no matter what response people show towards you, is that you only give them a prophetic response. You only respond in a prophetic fashion. And if that's at the forefront of your mind, that when you interact that you will have the secret of being able to change people and to be able to understand what it is that is preventing them from seeing things in the correct way or seeing things from your own perspective. And the verse that we'll mention in relation to that is what comes after idfa'abilati hiya ahsan. That Allah Ta'ala says, فَإِذَلَّذِي بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَكَ عَدَاوَتُهُ فَإِذَلَّذِي بَيْنَكُ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَتُهُ that all of a sudden, you'll find that between the one in whom you had enmity, there was enmity between you. It will be as if he is a dear friend. Meaning, if you respond in a prophetic manner, oftentimes that you'll have a response back to it that is also related to these same realities. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد الشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الأكرمين وتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين 
شرونه الله الذي لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اله واحد ورب شاهد ونحن المسلمون وشر ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وكرة عيننا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ابر الله اني مسيكم ونفسي يا يا بتقوى الله Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he refers to the other obligations of Islam whether it be prayer or whether it be fasting or whether it be zakat or the pilgrimage that he mentions it and he commands us to do so when it comes to praying upon our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he sets the example our lord says in the quran subhanahu wa ta'ala inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna 'ala an-nabi ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu 'alayhi wa sallimu taslima اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد ورضي الله تعالى عن سادتنا الخلفاء الراشدين ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى جميع ساداتنا الصحابه الكرام واهل بيت المطهرين من الجاس وعلينا معهم وفيهم برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا اخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملت على الذين من قبلنا ربنا واتنا ما وعدتنا على رسولك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامه انك لا تخلف الميعاد May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the highest levels of love for him and our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fill our hearts with nur and iman and place barakah in our lives and our words and our deeds and everything we do bless our children inshallah ta'ala bless us all to be upright inshallah bless us to be able to do actions that when they're shown to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it brings happiness to that noble heart of his May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala place blessing inshallah ta'ala in all of the efforts and everyone and all the blessed people in this community Dr. Muzammil and everyone that is around him and everyone that is serving Islam in the best of ways May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them and and in doing and to grant them tawfiq to the highest degree inshallah to accept all of their works and bless it be able to be accepted in his presence subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us and give us enabling grace to be able to do what is necessary in the upcoming generations inshallah to Allah so as to be able to pass on the baton to the next generation and people into the deen of Islam and hordes may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with light and iman and bless us have long lives in the obedience of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and after a long life in the obedience of Allah have the very last thing that we say when we exit this dunya we la ilaha illallah muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam completely actualizing its meanings inwardly and outwardly. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ahsani wa ita'i dhul qurba wa yanha'an al fahshai wal munkir wal baghi ya'idukum la'allukum tadhakkurun udhkur la razim yadhkurkum wa shkuruhu ala niyamihi zidkum wa la zikrullahi akbar.